This is San Francisco. It's Toshio. Today I have something different for you all, which is a little Q&A with Miss Major Griffin Gracie, who is my co-author for our book. It's out this week, and it's called Miss Major Speaks, Conversations with a Black Trans Revolutionary. Major was at the infamous Stonewall Riots in 1969, and in the 1970s, she was locked up in a New York State solitary confinement cell where she met a survivor of the Attica Riots known as Big Black, who became her mentor there. And she's been a mentor to me and many of the people she calls her girls, including in the Tenderloin, where she founded an all-night drop-in center called Gigi's Place, and later through the TGI Justice Project, where she went back into prison as a mentor to girls locked up at the SF County Jail and in state prisons around California. When we met, Major was living at her apartment at MLK and 29th in Oakland, but she lived around the Bay Area in the Tenderloin in San Jose and in San Mateo for many years before moving out to Little Rock, Arkansas, where she is currently. I was out in Little Rock recently where Major and I recorded this little interview for the podcast, but before I hit play on that, we have a few events coming up in the Bay including one at the main library in Civic Center on May 30th. You can get the book wherever you get books and look for more events and support this podcast at patreon.com slash sad Francisco. Avenge Banco Brown. And this is kind of related to something that we talked about recently about San Francisco, about how it has like where you lived for a couple decades and uh, spent a good part of, of your life there. One of the things that people think about San Francisco when they hear it, they think, oh, this is like a place that's very progressive, very liberal. You've, I gathered, found that there is always... Um, if you peel back the layers, that liberal reputation is only, it only goes so far. Well, anything is, if you look at it carefully, you'll see that it's all a matter of what they can present, how they appear like, you know, you don't know who they are or what they are. So, red state or San Francisco? Red, blue, green, yellow, it don't matter. Yeah. Let's see, in, I think it was 2016, you had a retirement party, mm -hmm. and there was a huge party at the uh, Battery in San Francisco, which is this beautiful old building, but you were only retired for about a minute. <laughs> what <laughs> caused you to come out of retirement, so to speak? Well, look around you, I mean, where I'm at now. There's people who need me. And if they need you, you gotta respond. You gotta yeah. do something. Nicole's never stopped. No. The first time we did an interview, it was in Oakland, in the parking lot next to the apartments. Yeah. With uh, Annalise. Uh, are you happy with your choice to move out here to Little Rock? And what do you find that's different? I'm glad I moved, and the difference is it's calmer, the pace is slower, and people have a tendency to mind their own business, not so in San Francisco. You're minding your own business out here? Yeah, I always mind my business. <laughs> <laughs> what is one question that you wish people would stop asking? How old I am. <laughs> Yeah, I get so sick of that. I'm almost 21. <laughs> That's it. Old enough? Old enough. What is the context that people generally ask you that question? Who's asking? Anything. I want to know, like, the black, how long I've known him, how old was I when I met him. And yeah. That's my business. Also, I think, yeah, the, the exact dates don't matter it so much. Matter, no. If, there is anything about the book that you, you want people to 
to go into it. I of, want them to really read it and to get out of it what they enjoy in it, you know. And then pursue that. Follow it through. See where it ends. And uh, you mentioned it's all right to give your number to anyone of course in the audience. Can. Yeah, they can have a number. <laughs> now it's a call. That depends. <laughs> <laughs> will you uh will you pick up? Yeah, well, <laughs> that's another thing. Will I pick up? I don't know. Depends on their voice. Yeah, it depends on what I'm doing at the time. Yeah. I mean if I'm in love making that's kinda of hard to stop and answer the phone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well nobody call while you're in the bedroom then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't call me. <laughs> Anything that you miss from San Francisco? I don't miss San Francisco at all. Well, are there any things that you feel like living in San Francisco hardened in you or made you sure of or, yeah, made you feel more sure of in yourself while you were there? Uh, the cars. The cars? Yeah, that's the cars. <laughs> yeah. The Cadillacs? Yeah, Lincoln's, Crosses, 57, 300, station wagons, cars, a real car. Talk about large cars, big cars. When did they stop making those? Uh, I don't know when they did, but since years now. Yeah. These little toys they keep running into. He hit them and they bolt up. So I've seen you talk girls down from a ledge. What is your advice for handling, I guess, someone who is has a lot going on, basically, and comes to you looking for advice? Um, meanwhile, they are they're trying to be an activist. Well, the thing is, I don't coddle them. You know, if they can get down and enjoy walking on the grass barefoot, then good they do that. If they can't, then leave out the fucking builder. So return to the simple things. Yep. The things that comfort you. There's gotta be something. As we I see the rise of this anti trans legislation in Arkansas and everywhere and the reconsolidation of pro police movements uh in san francisco as as well as arkansas um how should we be responding well you should think about that how do you want to respond because the police are not careful of who they protect they protect the wealthy don't protect the poor they protect the rich don't protect, you know so what do you want what do you think is fair you know they need to protect us. They don't. So you got to come with some other, some, some other way to make them who break the law pay for it. Yeah. Without going to jail. So we ended up with this cover. Oh, yeah. Can you describe the image for people who are, who cannot see? There's three wigs. <laughs> I love that dress, but and I look like I'm stripping. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is there anything that you that has surprised you about the reception to the book so far? You know, whether it's from Guy or the reviews, most of which I have not uh, read to you yet. Um, I'm rather shocked that they are interested in words coming from me. Yeah. Why? Well, who am I? I mean, yeah. you're kind of the the mother of a movement. Yeah, but that's so because I managed to live long. <laughs> <laughs> you have obviously been in the fight for longer than most people. What keeps you at it? Um, revenge, spite, friendship, trauma bonding. I have a two-year-old son now. On top of my other two boys, but and I think about him, you know, to hear him laugh and that kind of thing fills me up with so much joy. 
and I want him to realize he can be whatever he wants to be. And that's why. Because you can now. In spite of the fact that they're trying to take some of those rights away. No, good luck with that. (laughs) Right, because when you were coming up, there was no thought of... No. Yeah. The law was there, but... How does you feel about the law? I don't like it. I don't like it now either, you know. I mean... Imagine I have to wear three articles of men's clothing. How am I going to wear what? Yeah. So, it has come with ways to surpass the law and still look solid. So it's like carrying an extra purse around? No, extra purse, you know, men's piece, you know, whatever it takes. What suggestions would you have for people who are trying to stay above drama that can consume interpersonal relationships within a movement? Well, drama is a part of the course, you know. Yeah. It adapted, keep on going. Um, any other messages to the people? Uh, not that I can think of. I'll read the book. And then I'll have a lot of questions. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Ta-da.